Hi, I'm Yala Bakari, and this is the story of how I gained the courage to write what's on my heart, a new inspiration plan. Dear Jimmy, my dearest Jimmy, I'm writing to you today on what would have been your 97th birthday. And while I wish I could report that things have changed significantly since your departure from this earthly plane some 34 years ago, I'm afraid to tell you that they haven't very much. Although something tells me this is not entirely surprising to you. I am not like the brave few of my age who knew you from your impassioned speeches, nor from your prolific boundary-redefining literature, some of which you will be proud to know has been adapted for screen and made its way into the lucky few curriculums where it will be taught and perhaps not fully understood and appreciated until much, much later. I'm afraid to say I came to you rather late, or right on time, depending on your view of fate. I learned of your writing on your 95th birthday. A stroke of luck led me to your haunting take on the reality of the American Negro in your essay, Letter from a Region in My Mind. Ironically enough, a few days after I chose to embark on my own journey as a writer. I don't think I fully appreciated it then either. Years of reports of police violence against those of our hue, coupled with near brushes with the law of my own, had numbed me to the significance of what it was you were saying. All I could see was that the way you wrote captivated me unlike anything I have ever read before. And I knew as a young and burgeoning writer that I owed it to myself and future readers to learn what it is that made your words so powerful. Now, two years later, a bit older and somewhat wiser, the world has shifted, or at least my view of it has. Cradled by the words of Tony and Lucille and Octavia and Ursula, and of course you, I find myself burdened with the fear you mentioned had taken hold of you that fateful summer on the avenue. Only mine is not born of concern for just myself, but for that of my children, my children's children, and our species as a whole. My heart is heavy as I look on the events of today. A widespread pandemic in which the lowest and basest form of human drives, the desire to protect another, is ignored daily. In the headlines, I see all the things you warned of, the quiet horrors white people were content to ignore when it was not happening to them. And much worse now as men of wealthy standing look to leave the planet while fires rage and rivers begin to boil. My heart is heavy, and I feel all the same the fear of not knowing what tomorrow will bring, mixed with the deep love for my fellow human beings, my fellow country folk, and my people. My heart is heavy. Thus, my reason for my letter today is not one of praise, I'm afraid, but one of beseeching. Toni Morrison said that you gave her language, that you gave us all language with which to call down a better world by setting fire to this one. And I've received that from you as well as her. But what I am asking is that you lend me your courage. The courage to not only criticize the country that I love, the world that I love, but to imagine something better. Even if my picture is incomplete, at least it will have left room in the minds of others to know something better is possible. And I am asking you to lend me that courage because you did that for me. You showed me that being a writer, being passionate, being outspoken and direct, and still being heard, not just screaming into the void, is possible. Demand of me and my work that courage and I shall deliver it boldly and unashamed. And hopefully, your next letter from me will be asking, now what? With love and deep affection, Yael Abakari. This has been an inspiration blog by Yael Abakari. For more of my writings, please visit yaelabakari.com. And don't forget to subscribe for more content. Thank you.